This next section of the video demonstrates the setting out and erection of hips and valleys. It is practical to set up the hip section of a roof before erecting the other trusses. The roof being erected in the workshop is L-shaped on plan. We must therefore start by placing in position the girder labelled TG4 on the drawing, as this girder will support the hip on the main roof. Girder TG4 is shown as a two-ply truss on the design drawing. The first procedure then is to fix together the two TG4 trusses to form one complete girder truss. The fixing details for connecting these girders together is shown on page 11 of the volume 2 handbook. It is being demonstrated in detail on our video because of the critical importance of correct assembly. The two TG trusses are placed one on top of the other to fit precisely together and these are nailed together using 100mm wire nails. The nails are driven into the top and bottom cords along the length of the trusses at 150 centers in a horizontal line. However, the nails are fixed in a chevron pattern. The rule of thumb gauge used on site for measuring the distance between nails on the angle is by stretching the thumb and little finger from one nail to the position of the next. This method results in a fairly accurate horizontal line for 150 mm centers of the nails. The nails are fixed into the center line of the webs at 300 mm centers. Once all nails are applied, the trusses are flipped over and extending sharp ends are clinched. 12 mm holes are now drilled adjacent to every joint and the two trusses are bolted together using 12 mm bolts and nuts and 40 by 40 by 4 mm thick square washers. This complete TG4 unit is now ready for erection. Where the girders are large spans, it is often easier to connect together the multiple ply trusses after hoisting in position. The layout drawing shows the position of the TG4 across the opening forming the L shape. We locate this position accurately by reading the two given dimensions from the end wall of the L on the plan. These read 759 and 760, which will be correct measurements for the TG4 girder from the inside face of the wall. Reference to hangers and cleats to be used in the following demonstration can be found on pages 13 and 14 of Volume 2 Handbook. Our demonstrator on the video has chosen to fit all the necessary fixing brackets for the main hip trusses onto the TG4 girder before erecting the TG4. He has established these correct positions from the truss spacing shown on the layout drawing of the girder and trusses to be supported on TG4. These are carefully measured and marked and the specified supporting brackets are fixed into position as required. The demonstrator chooses to fix the 90 degree brackets by gauging the thickness of the torsion strap to set the bracket about 1.5 millimeters below the bottom cord level. If nail holes of the hangers are located directly over a nail plate, the holes are punched into the nail plate using a wire nail to allow the clout nails to freely penetrate the timber. Note that the hip girder TG2 is to be positioned 2,115 from the inside face of its parallel wall. This dimension is critical to the accurate setting out of the whole hip. The torsion restraint strap reference is found on page 12 of Volume 2 Handbook. The girders and jack trusses are now trimmed to the correct bottom cord lengths. Torsional restraint strap is nailed to the bottom cord at the end of each truss being fixed onto the TG4. Using the correct number of clout nails as shown on the detail, 
TG4 is now placed vertically in position and temporarily braced. Go to TG2 and trusses TT1 and A1 are fitted over the wall plates on one end and slipped into the brackets on TG4. Note how the torsional restraint strap is pulled through the small gap previously set at the bracket and the trusses are pulled firmly against TG4. The straps are now nailed up the face of TG4 as detailed. The fixing of the anti-torsion strap on site shows the nailing of the strap under the truss bottom cord and up the side of the girder with the required number of nails. After the truss has been firmly pulled into the hanger, this is the method shown on page 12 of volume 2 of the handbook. The 90 degree hanger in this instance is fixed flush to the underside of the girder bottom cord after the girder has been hoisted into position. Girder TG2, truss TT1 and the first truss A1 are now plumbed and temporarily braced. We now have the basic formation for the hip structure on one end of the building. The hip at the other end will now be set up and the intermediate A1 trusses erected using the demonstrated procedure shown for erection of trusses on this DVD. We now demonstrate the erection of the hip. The position of the holding brackets for the jack trusses J1 and the hip girder HG1 are now measured and marked onto the face of the girder TG2. The dimension for positioning are stated on the roof layout drawing. The specified hangers are fully nailed into position. The heavy duty support bracket for the hip girders are held in position. The 12 mm bolt holes marked and the holes are drilled to receive the bolts, nuts and washers. A tip worth noting, the J1 truss which is supported on the heavy duty bracket is chamfered vertically to allow for the thickness of the weld down the vertical corner of the bracket. The J1 will now fit firmly against the face of the bracket. The ends of the bottom cords are now trimmed to the correct length and the hip girder cut to 45 degrees and placed into position firmly against the girder. The J1 trusses are now bolted to the two brackets. The extended rafters of the jacks are cut to length at the angle of the roof pitched to fit accurately against the apex of the first A1 truss and nailed through the top cord of A1 into the end grain of the rafters to hold them in position. These J1 trusses are plumbed and the extended rafters are skew nailed into the horizontal top cords of the truncated trusses to temporarily hold them in position. The demonstrator now extends a pencil line from the underside of the TG2 rafter along the face of the horizontal top cord. Using the center line of the pencil mark, he now measures the thickness of the hip rafter on either side of the pencil mark to establish the correct position for the hip girder to pass over truncated top cord of TG2. He now pulls a chalk line from the side of the center J1 rafter at the apex of A1 to the mark on the TG2 horizontal top cord. The rafter of the hip girder is now fixed over this mark. The top cord of the first J1 will butt against the hip rafter and it is now cut at an angle of 45 degrees against the marked position. The rafter of the second J1 jacks are cut at 45 degrees along the chalk mark position at the TT1. The top and bottom cords of the hip girders are now cut to length and the apex of the rafters cut to a 45 degree angle. The extensions of the bottom cords are cut from the center line at 45 degrees on either side to fit snugly against the bracket 
on one face and the first J1 on the other. These HG1 hip girders are now placed in position over the corner of the building to the apex and nailed in position. A fish line is now pulled over the top cords at the heels of all the main trusses and along the line of the jack trusses around the corner in order to ensure that all trusses are level. Once this task is completed, the jacks and hip girders are finally secured and nailed into hangers and the anti-torsion strap secured. The smaller jacks as J2 on the layout are then fixed from the wall plate mark onto 45 degree truss hangers nailed against the hip girders. The rafters of all trusses passing over the horizontal top cords of TG2 and TT1 are now securely fastened on the horizontal top cords using a hurricane clip or pre-punched strap connection as shown on the detail on page 21 of the volume 2 handbook. Note that a hurricane clip can only be used on a single member truncated truss. Page 20 of the Volume 2 handbook shows the procedure after completion of installation of all hip girders and jacks and the trusses have been leveled and plumbed. A punched strap must be wound tightly around the vertical webs of the trusses abutting the girders and the adjacent vertical web of the girder where this occurs and the strap nailed securely into the vertical webs.